it's good good news it's all good news it's a it's a great thing hi paul slack is good news broadcast here at the friars club pat greenwald hi pat how are you i'm fine paul how are you okay great uh, i love being at the friars club and we're going to actually inform our audience of what the friars club is but first I'm, i'd like to read a letter to everybody that was uh, sent to you from uh, the general united states army commander david petrosis and Petraeus. Petraeus, okay, thank you. And uh, this is, I think, going to set the stage of why we're here at the Friars Club. Uh, Pat uh, Patricia is the founder and the chairman, uh, a woman, I guess, the uh, Gift of Laughter Wounded Warriors Program. And at the Friars Foundation, we're here in New York City, in New York, New York. And dear Ms. Greenwald, Thank you for your letter of January 28, 2011, updating me on the great work of the gift of laughter. This is what we're going to let everybody know about, uh, what you have been doing for the wounded warriors. I was delighted to read about the many events and the big name celebrities who participated. This is good news, we love good news indeed, that our wounded warriors receive such recognition and support. I very much appreciate the many outstanding activities you support to recognize the brave men and women who have sacrificed so much for our nation. Again, thank you for all you do for our troopers who have been wounded in action. I look forward to receiving your next update. Best wishes from Cabal. This is a very important letter from the commander. And Yes, he's uh, a very important person. T tell us about how you got involved, how the Friars Club... Uh, first, what is the Friars Club? The Friars Club is probably the oldest and most prestigious entertainment club in the United States. It started over a hundred years ago, and it was founded by very well-known comedians and entertainers in, in the country. Okay, and we're physically here right now, and now we fast forward uh, many years, and the Friars Foundation uh, has taken on a, uh, a Gift of Laughter program for wounded warriors. Why? Well, the Friars Foundation really didn't take it on. This is something that I created here uh, <clears throat> when I realized that there was no real uh, program bringing entertainment to our young wounded warriors from Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, I saw an opportunity, being a long-standing member of the club, uh, to bring these two um, needs together. One was a need for entertainment, which I felt the uh, troops um, would enjoy and would welcome, and also the fact that the um, Friars Club represented the height of uh, talent in the entertainment world. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could bring entertainment to these wounded warriors from Iraq and Afghanistan, currently in the military hospitals? And then I also thought about the um, outpatient warriors who also would benefit from a, a program of entertainment um, in, in a little different capacity. And out of this grew the name, The Gift of Laughter, which is our uh, Wounded Warrior program as part of the Friars Foundation. Okay, so let's give an example of what uh, literally the organization does. The Gift of Laughter brings fully produced shows uh, to the military hospitals such as Walter Reed, Brook Army Medical Center, uh, the warrior units in the, in the various uh, camps and bases. And our shows consist of young comedians because the patients are young, uh, music, and celebrities. And for the um, outpatients, we bring them here to the Friars Club so they can enjoy the Friars Roasts, the comedy evenings, our activities at the club, I also bring them to uh, concerts, theater, sporting events, and other events around the city. And then we also do um, shows in venues um, outside of the hospital, but outside of the club, where the warriors are um, bussed in. We work with the NYPD, and the warriors are bussed in from um, other areas, Walter Reed, uh, Fort Drum, way up in northern, north northern part of the state, and for special holidays in New York, and we work with the Wounded Warrior Project, 
that brings the warriors in and we provide the entertainment for the event. Okay, once again uh, a wonderful outreach and uh, I mean the, the, there's, there's such a need for this, isn't there? Well, it, it's, been, um, it's been proven in medical research and I think uh, it's also general knowledge that um, a positive attitude and uh, laughter and smiles all contribute to recovery in some way. And uh, that's really the objective of what we are trying to do here, is to bring a, a, um, a positive outlook, an uplifting attitude uh, to help these warriors get through their particular uh, recovery. And many of them come back, I believe, with post-traumatic stress syndrome. And uh, in essence, you right. know, you've been in war and they're hurting puppies to a certain degree. PTSD is the signature injury of this war. Uh, and it's in many ways a, a hidden industry uh, injury. It's, um, it's, it's very nefarious, it's very subtle, but uh, it, uh, it attacks so many of the wounded warriors with the stress of fighting an unknown enemy out there. Uh, has an effect on, on their, their total uh, behavior, thinking, attitude. A very serious injury and difficult to, to work with and handle. I mean, this is heavy. A certain aspect of this by far is, you know, difficult stuff. I mean, not everybody also comes back with every limb attached, right? So many of these uh, patients are amputees and um, this is another important um, in injury of this war, um, but it's, it's something that is uh, in many ways less complicated uh, to handle. This is a war, um, every war is different and every war is bad, but this war has um, concentrated on um, destruction from the ground up instead of from the skies, as our previous wars did. This is a, a, a war of IEDs and hand grenades and suicide bombers. So in that sense, their injuries are different. In this war also, we've had some tremendous technological advances. Certainly we know about the advances in medicine in this war. But we've also had tremendous advances in transportation. And that is, if a um, soldier is hurt in the field, the amount of time that it takes for them to get to Lonstool or get to a hospital for immediate treatment and then get to the States is short and so that um, compared to other wars, it generates a whole different type of treatment. For example, the Wounded Warrior Project started when one wounded soldier went to visit a friend in Walter Reed who was very sick and he saw that the soldier still had the sand from Iraq in his hair. He was in Walter Reed in Washington. That's how fast he was transported from the battlefield to the hospital. So that uh, makes, that results in a different kind of care and different attitude and, and different advances. Let me ask you, in essence now, maybe more personal, because you're very revered here. I happen to know a lot of friars, and they're, you are thought of very uh, uh, highly as Thank far you. as a, uh, a believer in, in, in causes. What, what, what made you want to work and get involved and ask the friars to support as well to whatever? I'm sure you could use probably some funding, which could bring more shows to so. more people um, and they have a website we'll talk about that after because the gift of laughter is is deserved well deserved joy it should be a government line in the government budget to uh, to uh, you know it's a good uh, idea yeah I think it's uh, you know we oh. uh, we're, we're doing a lot of a lot of things a laughter line a laughter line you know there's the the office of peace too it can go right in there yes so uh, yes. 
Um, why did why did you do this? Well, I saw an, uh, a natural compatibility here between what the friars are known for and what we do best. And what we do best is entertain. <laughs> and we have we have the skills, we have the staff, and we have the names. So there's a compatibility between what we do best here and what I saw as a need out there with these young uh, soldiers, men and women, incidentally. Uh, I think 17% of the uh, wounded warriors are female. Um, and so I thought, let me see if, if, if I can use, uh, if I can bring together this, this natural compatibility that we have between the talents of the club and the needs of the soldiers and see if we can play a role in helping increase the positive attitude and the well-being of these soldiers as they go through their recovery. You have another outreach, I believe might be a little bit newer, something called the uh, Gift of Laughter for Broadway. And uh, so, sponsor, this is, this is a way you can get involved and, 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 and actually literally help to bring a, a wounded warrior into the city for, a, for, for some joy and the family? Or yes, we have. The Gift of Laughter has grown. We've, we, we've spawned several tentacles, uh, really emanating from the needs of the wounded warriors. And uh, the GOL, Gift of Laughter, um, Broadway, is um, the newest one where uh, we provide Broadway tickets for the warriors who want to see Broadway. Most of the warriors who are here in New York uh, come from other parts of the country. They hear about Broadway and they've never been, been here. So we, we provide Broadway tickets for them. Along with this, I learned that one of the ways of putting a smile on the faces of the warriors, the very, very uh, disabled warriors who are cared for at home by their parents, um, is to give their full-time caregivers some time off. And a lot of these uh, warriors have 24-hour care. Very often, both parents have to quit their jobs and look after their child at home. And one of the ways to help a warrior smile is to let him know that their parents are going to get a time off. So we have a time off program where we uh, give the parents, the caregivers, uh, tickets to a Broadway show of their choice, a nice afternoon in the city, and uh, a nice dinner or a nice lunch so that they can have a day away from, from their work and caring for their caring for their child. And um, it's turning out to be a, a, a very uh, needed program. I have one mother who said to me, I'm so anxious, I'm looking forward to this. I've been doing this with, with our son for six years now and I need a respite. I need to get away. And I'm so excited that we're going to see the Lion King in New York. And so this is, this is working out nicely. Beautiful. and and, and I imagine, could somebody sponsor uh, this kind of an activity? Absolutely. Uh, each of these can be a, an individual project in and of itself. Um, the more, uh, f more money and more funds that I can generate, the more uh, wounded warriors we can reach out to. And each of these can be a project. Uh, somebody could sponsor an afternoon in New York uh, for the caregivers of these soldiers uh, with a, a nice dinner or lunch. I also provide, I have a, a division called the GOL Express where I will send a car for the warriors or their parents uh, to get them into because traveling on public transportation often presents problems. And so uh, I will have a car available for them while they're in the city or I will send a car to get them to the events here in the city. Uh, so the GOL Express is now um, in operation, and there I'm using uh, fire, fire members who have cars or friends who have cars, and we support uh, all the expenses of something. So this could be a, a whole sponsorship, each one of these afternoons or evenings uh, for the Warriors, as well as, uh, uh, as, well as the shows that, the, that we put on. We have a regular New Year's Eve show for the Warriors, and it's a, it's a big, noisy, rowdy New Year's Eve, but <laughs> uh, 
with the police department that helps transport us and the warriors. And um, th they come to our show, and then the warriors, the Wounded Warrior Project takes them. Oh, they have a big dinner in the church, and we have about 250 warriors. And then they go to uh, see the tree at Rockefeller Center, and then the police sees that they have special seats to watch the ball drop on New Year's Eve. And we are part of this show. We bring the gift of laughter to this show. So that is also a sponsorship event. And uh, any of these can, in whole or in part, uh, help us with, with contributions. When you talk about celebrities, I mean, when, uh, we were just fortunate enough to be at the uh, uh, the benefit, the wonderful program, and the Waldorf, and uh, you had some great people come out and uh, support the whole uh, Friars Foundation and, and your organization. So give us, because we're going to broadcast that as well, and we're going to send people over to that to, to that show. So with Connie Francis and but who else was there? That was something. Well. One of the people, we had a lot of um, well-known entertainers there, but we had one, one person there who has been very active with us, and that's um, Uncle Junior from The Sopranos. He comes with us to Walter Reed quite often. And as you know, he's not only uh, an actor, but he's a, a well-respected uh, singer and musician. And uh, at Walter Reed, for example, uh, often our shows... Um, are difficult for the very, very sick warriors to attend, those that are still bedridden, they can't get down to their shows. We go into the rooms with the permission of the hospital. They select warriors who have been screened ahead of time to give their permission to have us go in. And Dominic was very good at this at, at Walter Reed once. He went in, we had, there was a warrior there, the hospital told us. He'd been there for 10 days and he hadn't responded to anybody. He was a TBI, traumatic brain injury. He wasn't talking, he wasn't responding. And uh, we said to Dominic, see what you can do. So we went, we sent Dominic in with another um, musician to play soft music, to play his guitar in the background. And he, Dominic spoke to the warrior and the warrior didn't respond. And Dominic said, I'm going to play you something on my guitar. And you may not have heard of this song, but I like it. It's called I'm Back in the Saddle Again. And he started to play, and he, and he sang for the warrior. And he said to the warrior, I'm sure you don't know this song, but I'm, I'm going to sing it for you anyway. And there was no response. By the time Dominic got to the last line in that song, the warrior opened his eyes and recognized and somewhat smiled recognizing this whole experience. Oh, I know. I have goose pimples all over my body. Uh, you have a website that we can tell people so they can be part of this? Yes, we do. It's uh, www.giftoflaughter.org. And there you can see, you'll see Dominic. You'll see a picture of me with a very severely warrior, just wounded warrior who recently had a, an avenue dedicated for him in the Bronx where he came from. He was burned over 97% of his body and he had survived these burns. And we were there to provide entertainment at the gala where he was being honored. He was doing the opening dance with his mother. And uh, there were a thousand people there. They cleared the floor for him to dance with his mother and uh, it was a bittersweet moment because he, he couldn't dance. He kind of shuffled around the floor. She, unfortunately, wasn't able to take the emotion of it, and, and she put her arms around him and collapsed in tears, as did everyone in the room. But unfortunately, the, the warrior, who was well known throughout the medical world and the military world for the nature of his injuries, had a, a minor operation on his lip to restore his lip. He was a saxophone player and he played in Carnegie Hall. And he had a minor operation to repair his lip and um, he didn't make it, he died. But this past summer they, they dedicated a, an avenue for him in the Bronx, oh. which was where he was born. And he, he was known as the Miracle Man. And when he died, he, he had editorials written about him from New York all the way to California in every big newspaper. Uh, for the fact that he survived with 
burns over his body. So we, we played, we worked with him and, and we played the, um, we took Len Cariou, who's a famous Broadway actor, to sing the songs that he wanted for his opening dance with his mother. And uh, we were part of the uh, show there uh, for their Christmas gala. It was, it was very successful, very touching. Okay. Well, you know, I actually I've never done what I'm going to do, but the good news for me is being here right now and speaking to you about the, the wounded warriors and the gift of laughter. You know, I personally am in love with this place. You just say Friars Club and I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> and I feel like I'm going to live an extra day or two just by knowing I'm going to well, be laughing. Well, we promise that to everybody who comes <laughs> here, an extra day of life. <laughs> and so for you, one last question is uh, what, what's the good news for you? Overall, personally, and for the organization in general, what's good news for you? What's good news for me? Uh, well, I'm, I'm very wrapped up in, in this program, and of course, what's good news for me is, is to see the uh, the reaction and the involvement of people who uh, want to help our, our wounded warriors. Um, those of us who work with with wounded warriors say we will never let. Vietnam happen again the way we treated our warriors when they came back from Vietnam. So what's good news for me is when I hear people say, this is great, I want to help you, how terrific, how can we get involved? That's my good news. Fantastic. Pat Greenwald, founder and chairman, the Gift of Laughter Wounded Warriors program here at the Friars Club. This is Paul Slackis uh, uh, signing off uh, for Until We Speak Again, or Until We're At One of These Events, and then sharing the, the good news and the happiness that you, you provide. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I'm, thank you for, for letting me speak to you and for letting me get onto good news broadcasting and get my story out. Thanks.